Welcome to The Complete Home Cook. I'm David Beck and today we're going to talk about my favorite cooking technique, braising. To braise is to sear food and then finish cooking it partially submerged in liquid. It's appropriate for meats, poultry, and with some adjustments it's also pretty good for vegetables. The simplicity of the definition belies the complexity of the results. In fact, braising produces some of the most soul-satisfying flavors in all of cooking. It's traditionally thought of as comfort food. And that's because there is, in the process of braising, a miracle that occurs. All cooking has been described as layering of flavors. And in fact, most techniques actually do that. They layer one flavor on top of another for a wonderful whole, but they're still discernible on the palate separately if you take the time. Braising, however, takes its layers of flavors and creates a separate wholeness of flavor in a process that Michael Ruhlman has described as metamorphosis. Michael Ruhlman, by the way, has produced some wonderful cookbooks. There's a moment when you're braising that this metamorphosis, this synergy occurs. At first, when you blend together all of the ingredients, it tastes interesting and somewhat young. If you come back in an hour or so, possibly even two hours, it will taste more mature. But somewhere between two and a half, three, and four hours, a transformation takes place that is startling and it's very exciting. All of the flavors stop being separate and they take on that satisfying deep wholeness. It's an exciting moment. I look forward to it every time I braise. So we'll be exploring the braising process today as we approach an American classic, pot roast.
By the way, this is a good time to remind you that the first rule of cooking safety is that hot pans look exactly the same as cold pans. Incredible. Let's see how we taste. It's nice. It's nice. The flavors are beginning to meld together. Um, the, there is a sweetness from the Vidalia onions and the carrots. The wine uh, flavor is not particularly pronounced. It's becoming a little bit more uniform, but it still tastes, as I say, very, very young. It's only been an hour. So we can see that the meat is browned, and as I push my fork in, you'll notice that it is still quite tough. This is again after an hour. I'm going to give it a turn to make sure that that top part gets exposed. Yes, and in fact, the bottom part, as you can see, is significantly uh, more um, tender. So we'll reverse positions, give that top part a chance to be in the cooking liquid itself. Let's go back in the oven. Let's see what our texture looks like. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. As you can see, as you can see the meat shreds. Oh man, that's good stuff. <laughs> the fork penetrates all the way through. Turn this over real quick. Oh yeah. And the back side, which was the front side, yes, you can see that the fork penetrates easily throughout the entire roast. I'm declaring this to be done. Well, since a small piece of meat has fallen off, why not, why not give it a taste? Mmm. Oh yeah. That's completely tender. We could skim the fat off of this, strain out the now spent vegetables, and thicken it with a bourmonier. But I think what I would prefer to do is I'm going to put this in the refrigerator overnight, and then we'll pick up this process tomorrow. After its overnight stay, the fat from the pot roast has risen to the top and then has congealed in the refrigerator. This gives us a chance to defat very effectively the pot roast. We're going to leave some fat in for flavor, however. Then we're going to transfer this to the stove top and reheat it gently. This does a couple of things. It melts the liquid and allows us to strain out the vegetables. The vegetables are pretty well spent after three and a half or four hours of cooking they don't offer us anything in terms of flavor or nutrition. So we're gonna, we're gonna strain those away. It also allows us the opportunity for the meat to gently reheat, and as it reheats, it will actually begin to reabsorb some of that cooking liquid, making it even more succulent. Before I add salt or any other additions, I think I'm going to reduce it a little bit to concentrate its flavor, and then we'll thicken it with the bourmonier. We're going to thicken our strained sauce with a bourmonier. Bourmonier in French means kneaded butter. It's equal parts of soft butter and flour, which we've kneaded together. We then use little pellets of it to drop into our liquid, our heated liquid, and this allows the flour to disperse into the liquid without lumps.
So I'll see you next time on The Complete Home Cook when we begin our exploration of eggs. We're going to start with a lemon pudding sponge cake that is absolutely wonderful.